Hello and welcome to the video. You might be able to tell from this setup that my house is still like a building site. Uh, we're getting a little bit further on. I'm about to fit a new radiator today. We've just been putting some panelling on the walls. Uh, these are all underfloor heating boards that I need to stick up uh, and onto the floor tomorrow. Anyway, we're going with it. Right, in this video, um, I am going to be doing a video idea from somebody called Chris in the comments of one of my videos who asked me to do a tutorial on how I shoot my panoramas and also how I edit them. So that's what this video is going to be about. So firstly, Chris, thank you very much for um, asking me to do this. If anybody has any other video recommendations so I can bang them out, that'd be a great help. So thank you very much. Uh, camera's probably a bit far away from me. It probably sounds a bit echoey. So I'm going to bring it closer and then uh, we'll get onto the screen here and then I'll show you how I do my um, panos when I'm shooting time, um, when I'm shooting stars. Right, let's go. Right, first things first. Um, how I shoot my panoramas when I'm out on a night and I've got a KNF Concept tripod I'm looking at it now. Um, and it's one of those ones that's got those swiveling ball heads on it. So I'll drop a link to it down below. Um, what I do with it is you literally just set your camera up and you can set it as landscape or portrait and then take the first shot, then you just unscrew the little jobby down the bottom and you can just pan it slightly and then take the next shot, pan it slightly, take the next shot, pan it slightly. What I always try and say to do is have like a 50% overlap, so keep taking the images um, and then that way it'll be easier for the software to stitch it when it's got more overlap in there. So that's how I shoot the panos first. And then right, let's jump into the computer and let's edit. There's my last video, watch it if you haven't. There's all my affiliate links, click on them if you haven't. Right, okay, what am I doing? Right, first thing, let's go into Lightroom. First thing I do then, I'm hoping that I've got a panorama um, already in Lightroom. The first thing I do is import the photos into Lightroom and then let Lightroom make the pano. If that doesn't work, then we'll use Photoshop. But I know that you're also asking how to make that and I will do that either in this one or in the next one, not sure. So one, two, three, four shots is sort of what I've done with that pano there. And all I do is say you've imported them, right click on them, uh, photo merge and panorama, and then let's see what Lightroom does with it. Computer's screaming already, but screen record. Right, so take auto crop off. There's a spherical. I have a click through each of these spherical cylindrical and perspective. Um, ideally, you would want there to be on perspective because <laughs> that normally gives you the best view. But what's happened here, if the tripod isn't level, then as it's moving around, you're actually tilting the camera up or down and it's confusing the shit out of the software. So I think with this one that spherical is the best. So what you want to do is you either need to make sure that your tripod is absolutely level. And I think some of them have like a little level bubble on them or whatever, or the in the camera's um, inbuilt leveler. You want to make sure that the tripod is completely level. You can see a stitch there in the middle as well. But anyway, yeah, so as you're twisting, you may tilt the camera up or down. So you can either buy a bracket that sits on top of the ball head or just make sure that the feet, that the legs of the tripod are actually level as you're spinning around. But as I'll show you here, I've not done that and you can still use the software to get away with it. I'm gonna do a bit of the boundary warp now. Get out of the way. So I'm actually gonna use the boundary warp 100% like that. Editing, but it seems like it's already edited because I've done it in the past. Just pan clarity on it, just the saturation into the. Okay, yeah, so definitely need some. Get rid of that. Right, okay, so from here, what I'm going to do is edit in Photoshop. Of course, if you just shot it properly, then you won't be having to stretch it out and stuff like this, but. Okay, so as I said, Command and T. Command and T, warp. And then we're just gonna pull this edge down slightly. So that it looks less odd. And I'm just gonna bring it down so that the house looks straight. Really, the aim of the game is just to make the horizon level. And I've pulled 
that right down, it's probably a little bit too much, but enter on that one. And then when I'm done, just command and save. And I'll then pull it back into Lightroom. And there he is, uh, to do some final edits and stuff like that on it. Too much clarity, can you? Okay, no. uh, Dehazing that, pull the shadows some more. Highlights, oh, you like some light pollution on that. Pull the whites a bit, etc., etc., etc. And that is it. Paint your sharpening. Yeah, so it's not an awesome picture, but you get the idea. That's how I shoot, and then that's how I edit the um, Milky Way photos. I'm not sure if this is actually that good, so I'm going to have to review the footage and see whether I'm going to be shooting this shit all again or whether I'm actually going to put this out. So if you made it this far, appreciate it. If there's any other video ideas that you've got, let me know. I'll get on it as quick as I can, uh, as long as they're not ridiculous. Thank you very much, and uh, cheers for watching. I'll see you again soon.